Good day, everyone. Father Jim here. Hope you're doing well on this Friday. Yes, it's Friday already. It is the 12th day of April. I'll be reading from both of our readings again today from the liturgy. Again, we go back to the New Testament book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, beginning with verse 34. A Pharisee in the Sanhedrin named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up, ordered the apostles to be put outside for a short time and said to the Sanhedrin, Fellow children of Israel, be careful what you are about to do to these men. Some time ago, Theudas appeared, claiming to be someone important, and about 400 men joined him. But he was killed, and all those who were loyal to him were disbanded and came to nothing. After him came Judas the Galilean at the time of the census. He also drew people after him, but he too perished, and all who were loyal to him were scattered. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. They were persuaded by him. After recalling the apostles, they had them flogged, ordered them to stop speaking in the name of Jesus, and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And all day long, both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Christ, Jesus. And our gospel today begins the sixth chapter of St. John. Of course, it's the long bread of life discourse, but beginning with the miracle multiplication of loaves and fish. So chapter 1, or chapter 6, verses 1 through 15. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near, and when Jesus raised his eyes and saw that the large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them even to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? And Jesus said, Have the people reclined? Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments and the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come to carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. Well, Jesus speaks to the world in so many different ways, through his teachings, which help us to understand and live out the many principles of the kingdom of God, and through the many miracles that he performed out of his compassion for the people in need. In a very dramatic way, Jesus speaks to the people in today's gospel of God's abundant generosity and power as he gave them more than enough to eat through the distribution of five barley loaves and two fish. The people responded so quickly to his power and love that they tried to make him their king. The words of Jesus himself, the very word of God, are living words present in the gospel. We hear him today and every day in the scriptures. The church herself, the bride of Christ, is a sign of God's great generosity, power, and love. Those of us who follow Jesus 2,000 years after his death and resurrection prove the point that Gamaliel was trying to make in the first reading. Jesus' followers are still around, not only in Israel, but throughout the whole world proving that Jesus' teaching and the preaching of the word of God by Peter and John was the work of God. Jesus' message is being preached today by millions of Christians. Now it's our turn. We're being called 
as Peter and John were, to proclaim the word of God, perhaps not through preaching at the pulpit, and most likely not through any formal miracles, but we are called to preach with our lives in a world that in many areas has strayed away from God. We testify that God loves us and has sent his son to redeem us. As we continue to come to, to our Lord each day in prayer, and also when we come to church, to that very sacred place, let's carry out and carry on that great work of Jesus, of Peter and John, in a world that really needs to hear this good news and experience all that hope. Yes, indeed, it is a world that can easily get discouraged. But the good news is Jesus Christ. So let's continue to feel that good news in our daily lives, but not hold it in, but share it with others as well. Hope your Friday is going well as we approach the weekend. God bless you and take care.